I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about scaling with student employees, how we used our student employees to scale our service. Uh, a couple notes. The first is that I'm bad at math and booked tickets before, uh, booked flights before I uh, knew I was speaking. So I'm going to go kind of quick through some of this stuff. Um, the next thing is that as soon as I submitted for this topic, I ended up changing teams. So a lot of this will be the past tense, but uh, hopefully we're looking at getting some more student workers for the fall, so I'll be able to uh, try it out then. Um, I feel like there's one other thing, but I'll remember as I go. All right, so yeah, my name is Peter Ava. I'm a product specialist at NYUIT. I sit with the, app, the academic application development team. Um, and I have worked with teams of students on support and management of NYU Web Publishing. Uh, what is NYU Web Publishing, you may ask? It is our service which allows students, faculty, and staff to create their own WordPress sites. Um, I think of it kind of like NYU's version of WordPress.com. In a lot of cases, that's who we are competing with. Um, currently, we have a Roughly 7,000 active sites, around 25,000 users, more in the database, but not active, um, something we're trying to work on. So a little bit more, our team, it includes, we have a service lead and technical lead. Um, we work with and also have some instructional technologists, a handful of freelance developers, two to six student employees. However, of all these sort of different roles and people, nobody is necessarily 100% focused on this service all the time. Um, so my goal for the next uh, 30 minutes or so is to try to think of, try to help you and your student employees work efficiently and effectively. Student workers can help you scale, but it needs to happen in a way that lets you still do work and you know, I found as an individual contributor, I'm not going to be able to spend all my time managing student work. Um, I was looking for a way to extend the capabilities of my team without having way, I guess, without just drowning in the overhead um, that comes with managing a team. And I kind of want to share some of that with you. Um, so first, I'm going to briefly touch on hiring student workers and sort of how we do that. Everybody probably has their own insane bureaucracy. We sure have ours. Um, so I won't talk so much about that, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about sort of what we're looking for and some of the challenges around that. So um, I really view the student role as an extension of my role, sort of as a product specialist, product manager. Um, and you know, our, our goal is to manage the service to create and maintain a usable ed tech product and an effective ed tech product while we're also supporting our user community and our individual users who are submitting tickets, coming in for consultations, and that sort of a thing. Um, so in this type of a role, a student might spend the morning digging through front uh, through code on the front end using the Chrome inspect tools and developer tools and that sort of thing to understand a problem. Um, in the middle of the day, they could be doing research on options for plugins and um, options around kind of our service and system design and preparing that for us. And in the afternoon, they could be talking to faculty about their sites. Um, and that faculty might be crying. Uh, it has happened. So this is not necessarily an easy role to hire for. Um, so it covers a couple different domains. I say there's a strong sort of product management element to it. There's some instructional technology, instructional design knowledge, which is really helpful to have. Um, there's design. We don't, I guess, things are changing at the moment, but um, we don't really have a dedicated design team within NYUIT. Uh, so a lot of times our students help with that. And there's also the aspect of technical skills. There are, technically, we aren't supposed to be a technical team, but we do have, uh, some tasks which require technical skills and understanding of how plugins work and understanding, basic understanding of PHP, a good understanding of HTML, CSS. But despite all of that, we really sort of prioritize people skills and teaching skills when we're hiring. That's really our focus. Um, I think that our philosophy has been that those things are going to be a lot harder to learn and um, 
they can kind of pick up the technical skills and learn how to use WordPress as they go, if if it's required. I mean, I think it makes more sense to put them on HTML, CSS, uh, on a tutorial on lynda.com than it does to do that for something like teaching skills. Um, so finding students is one of the hard parts. Uh, I'm sure we've all tried all sorts of different things. For us, we are reaching out to students in specific programs sometimes. I go back to the program I graduated from. Um, personal connections, friends of our current student workers uh, can be a good way to get to people. And we do have a job portal at NYU for on-campus jobs, but it does have its own set of issues. First being that finding students who actually read the ad is difficult. I mean, as with any job position, a lot of people are just sort of spamming resumes out. Um, so I think this may have started with Malik, but it could have started with another colleague, Erica. They sort of set it up so in order to apply for this job, be considered you must uh, create a site using our service. And we'll look at that site, and that will be considered part of your application. We also have trouble around messaging. Um, it says IT in somewhere in the ad. It lists one or two types of code, which we'd, which we'd be really happy if you had familiarity with. So we get a lot of what we think of as the NASA resumes. Um, they're very, very technical, very hard computer science stuff. Um, I, I, I work on an engineering team now. I don't necessarily understand sort of what's coming in on some of those resumes. And so that ends up being a challenge for us because we have to kind of sort through them to, to I guess, read between the lines and figure out who uh, could be good. And we also compete with the rest of New York City for students which can be a challenge. Um, you know, especially students can work at places like Major League Baseball, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, basically any consulting company or any bank. Um, they have lots of like summer analyst or summer associate positions. And so it's hard for us to get and keep students sometimes because of that. Um, so I'm gonna move on to talk a little bit more about how we work and how we, um, I guess, how we work with our students effectively. My experience was that I quite suddenly found myself just managing this team of students. I didn't necessarily know what was going on at the start. A lot of the information about what the students were doing was sort of spread throughout documents and people's brains. Um, so I sort of started with some basic questions. Things like, where are the students now? Um, what are they working on? Why are they working on that? And also, how is it going? Um, things which would have been good to know at the beginning. And also, as soon as I had those students, some of them graduated. Uh, so it was, I found myself in a position with a smaller team and not much institutional memory. So I, we were able to bring in a system which was starting on our tech team and sort of import it to our less technical uh, support and management team. Um, and so it's kind of Scrum. I haven't ever actually been formally trained in Scrum. I've just learned from others who have. Um, but essentially what we do is we've got roughly two week sprints about, which equates to about 40 hours for our student workers that are during the semester that 20 hours a week. Um, with that sort of reduced time, we found that two weeks is long enough to make some progress towards a goal. And it's kind of a reasonable length of time uh, for them to to, I guess it gives them a reasonable target date to work towards, time to get stuff done. Um, so we create and managed a backlog and a scrum board. We're in Jira, don't necessarily think the software matters that much, but that's what we're using. Um, so for the backlog, it's a lot of just constantly making lists of things, which I think this could be good for students and um, adding ad or things for myself or for um, other members of the team and just keeping all of that in JIRA. We can throw things out later if they don't seem reasonable or realistic, but just having that list there of stuff that has to get done. Um, we do a review and planning meeting with all the team members every two weeks, so it lines up with our sprints. With student schedules, it's hard to find the time to get everybody in, but um, I find that every two weeks, has worked. Usually we've been able to find that time. It's just an hour. So we got to move really quick to get through everything, but it brings us all in the same place. It puts us all on the same page. 
So briefly, our tools, NYU is with Google. Um, we also use what I always thought of as Jira, but actually turns out to be Jira Core. Um, I guess they split off into different products at some point. Um, as, so with Google, we're in Drive all the time, and we use the calendar function a lot. Um, so the benefits of the process, which I have found, the first is it creates clear priorities. Uh, we know what's important to the team and what needs to get done next. It also lets us visualize our resources. Um, the board lets me see what the students are up to. So if something comes up, I can make a tactical decision about who should be spending time where or who should be spending time doing what. Um, and that relates to flexibility too. I mean, in, in probably any environment, there's rapidly changing work and sometimes rapidly changing priorities. So um, if something gets blocked or if something suddenly decreases in priority, I can get the students switch to another task without too much, I guess it doesn't take as much time to switch them around. And I know what they're working on. Um, also, the context is visible, which I personally find kind of important because as an intern and as a student worker, um, it, I sometimes didn't have a great idea of what was going on, but this lets the students see what everyone else is doing. And including me, I try to put as much of my work into that, um, I guess, on into that JIRA project as possible so that everyone can see. Um, Student choice is something which I think is also helpful. Um, this having sort of um, that menu of options of work that needs to get done, it lets them to some extent make a choice about what they'd like to work on. And also lets them sort of discover what they're better at and what they enjoy more, rather than just saying, okay, we're always going to give the documentation to this person and always going to give design work to this person. Um, they're, and they also get to kind of negotiate it a little bit, which I think could be a useful skill for them in the future, sort of understanding the trade-offs and choosing what, where to spend their time. Um, time usage has been big. We don't, one thing I noticed when I started was that sometimes the students would go for a very long time without work to do. And a lot of times they'd be good about coming to me and letting me know, but it's hard for me to drop everything and create a project for them. Even if there's lots of work that needs to get done, it needs to be sort of molded and shaped into something which makes sense for a student employee working part-time. Um, so uh, using this process and using JIRA, we have like everything there. The backlog is there, the priorities are there. So it's pretty easy to just to assign them to something else quickly if they run out of things to do. Um, the last thing, and this one's big, is consolidated communication. Everything is in one place. It doesn't have to be Jira, it could be Trello, it could be a million other products, but it's all in one place. We have links out to the documents. We can look back at our discussions with the students and among the team about different projects. So a month later, if we've forgotten why we made a decision or if we need sort of um, background information, we can go back through JIRA and find that information. That's not to say it does not have challenges though. So the big one is of course overhead. Um, it takes time to manage JIRA because for it to work well, it has to be detailed. Um, and we also do spend some time in meetings, but hopefully less than we would otherwise is try, kind of how I try to think of it. Um, I guess for the JIRA, for the, each of the tasks or stories, um, I try to put as many details and instructions as possible into that. So I can just sort of click assign in the tool. It goes to the student. They know that it's there for them. And they know they can check in with me and I'll usually check in with them verbally, but the instructions should all be there so they could get started and they have an idea of what they need to do. Um, now I try to see it as an investment of time, you know, 30 minutes, like creating, I guess, putting everything together for the student could equate in us getting 20 hours of good work um, from the student. The other thing which ha has been somewhat difficult has been enforcing deadlines. Um, we haven't really, because we haven't had that many deadlines, and so I haven't figured out a great way to handle them yet. But when they do come up, I think the students are accustomed to um, 
And so they're accustomed to sort of being able to switch between jobs or something carrying over into the next sprint if necessary. And um, so, yeah, deadlines has been an issue for us. So I asked our students what they thought about this, and I got a couple of responses from them. Um, mostly positive, which makes me wonder if I should have made it anonymous, but um, they, they did give me some feedback. So one thing which was said was there's good communication, and that equates to a good learning experience for them. They spend a lot of time, they're communicating directly with us a lot. Um, a lot of it is in text, but they are communicating with us, and they can see us talking about other things on other, on other tasks or stories. Um, and so, yeah, one of them identified that as a really good learning experience. Um, it's also been easy to track our work and collaborate with others, is what uh, one of them said, kind of that collaboration key, because we can like tag someone to get their input on a project, or you can move things between people as necessary as it goes through different stages. And um, they felt that that had been helpful. Um, the visibility of work. This is something which I was thinking of too, so I'm glad to see it mirrored in what they are thinking. Um, they know what the others are working on, and I think they find that helpful. The prioritization is something which everyone understands. We're all on the same page. And one of them noted that as being very helpful. They always sort of know what they should be working on right away and what they can take more time and what they can spend more time on or what they can delay the more important things um, uh, take longer than expected. So this was interesting. One of them said that they found it easier to be productive with this. They found that it was more productive to use this task, and, or I guess to use this sort of a scrum type process. And he said it was because he knew what he wanted to do. Like he always knew what he should be working on next. He always knew that there were more tasks waiting for him to pick up um, rather than, I guess, waiting for someone to assign him work or waiting for us to figure out what they should, they should be working on. This is one I hadn't thought of, but one of them mentioned that um, the two-week sprints make it really, make it easier to plan their time on, like, I guess, plan how they are going to use their time at work. So if that was a period of time where they could just figure out, I mean, so they know the priorities, they know what they need to do, and they, it helps them manage their time. Um, one note was that the notifications, this is sort of a tool focused one, but they didn't really like the notification system. Everything comes through email for us now. Maybe there's other settings for that. But um, I think that seeing everything in one place was something which they uh, sort of wanted to see. Okay, so in case anyone, in case any of you here or anyone watching um, is I mean, it's possible that um, you're already working with students or you aren't happy with your current system or you're interested in trying it. I want to talk a little bit about why I think it can be good to work with students. Um, for us, from our perspective, I guess, as a full-time employee working with a team of the part-time students, we get a lot of work done with much fewer resources. Um, sort of ruthlessly capitalist to, to think of it that way, but it is true. We can get through a lot and they are... And they have been really helpful. Um, you know, I, as I mentioned, you know, that half hour creating detailed instructions and laying out a project for a student can turn into 20 hours of the actual sort of on the ground, hands-on work. Um, and we get it back from them. It's good to have the student perspective on an ed tech tool. Um, they are, in some cases, the ones who are required to sit down and use this thing, which we spend all of our time on. And sometimes, um, it's, I know it's something NYU is working on is getting more student input. Um, and this is one way to do that. They're sort of behind the scenes and they understand the trade-offs we're making better and they can sort of bring their perspective to that. The other thing is, is that we get exposure to a lot of different perspectives, skill sets and ways of thinking. Um, you know, we have undergrad students, they're exposed to a lot of different domains and ideas. You know, we'll be in a meeting and they'll bring up a point from like the history of architecture or something when they're discussing design, which isn't something that you get with, you know, the normal sort of crowd of IT professionals necessarily. 
um, our MA you know, like master's students and grad students that come to us with experience in other fields or in other organizations possibly, and that can be helpful. From the student perspective, uh, for some of them, for some of our students at least, this is their first sort of real world job. And so this provides a good real world experience. Um, they aren't, I guess they're doing more than sort of stamping library books or um, scanning ID cards or something like that. So for students interested in going into things which require portfolios, something which is nice for us as a nonprofit, maybe it's odd for NYU, I'm not certain, but we don't really, we don't have NDAs or anything like that. So um, they can show all of their work out when they're looking for a job later on. Um, future opportunities across industries. I'm not gonna say there's causation, but there's definitely a correlation between our students and getting some really interesting opportunities. They have been, and just in the last year or so, I know several of them have been recruited by places like Google and Facebook. One went to work for JP Morgan Chase. Um, uh, uh, others are involved in startups in New York. And so I guess that's been really gratifying. And I like to think that this experience has helped them get to those goals. Connections with peers. I know some students uh, from a year ago, I think they, I've heard anecdotally that they still hang out together. Um, and of course, money, the students in New York City. So it's uh, helpful to have an extra source of income. So, but again, overall, the challenges are overhead. I think that's, a, I mean, that's one of the big drawbacks. The other thing is that students can usually be short term. Um, you know, at most, like, like we're, we're really lucky if we can get more than a year with a graduate student, roughly. And that's a year of part-time work, maybe full-time, NYU full-time, 35 hours in the summer, but um, usually a year at most. However, I think that using sort of an agile system can help in that transition and can help move people between projects and bring in someone new if necessary. Um, so I guess this is kind of the thought I wanted to leave you with. Student employees are a really important part of our team. They've really extended our capacity and made it possible for, for us to operate at the scale that we, I guess, at our current scale. Um, and they've made our service better in a lot of different ways. So on that note, if you're ever looking for uh, any full-time higher ed WordPress expertise, uh, a couple of our students said I could add their LinkedIn links. So if you visit the slideshow, um, they all know accessibility really well. Um, and they're all, yes, yeah, so all these students do have technical skills. So, um, or you can get in touch with me and I can always connect you with others. So, any questions? Anything I can illuminate? Yeah. So, uh, how many students were you managing at any given time? So, usually, I guess I was working usually with um, between two and five. Okay. I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the challenges I faced with um, student workers, uh -huh. it goes to the overhead, I guess, in yeah. the short term, but is um, the on onboarding process. Yeah. And how have you worked to kind of get people up to speed rapidly? Yeah. So, I so actually cut those slides from this earlier, but. <laughs> Um, so for onboarding, one thing which we've done is, I guess one thing which our students did for us is they noticed that our onboarding process wasn't great. And so they created a WordPress site about the onboarding process. And it has, yeah, yeah. And it has um, sort of been, I mean, it's only been around maybe a year and a half now, but it's sort of, whenever we bring on new students, they will update it. They'll add to it, like, so it kind of covers it kind of covers some of the basics about the job, because we have so many international students. There's also a sort of section on like how you can get the visa paperwork done in four days. Like these are the offices you go to in this order. Like this should be your schedule. That sort of a thing. So yeah, that's been good. Um, I yeah for I think. When I know a student is coming on, something that I've just done personally is I've tried to sort of start setting aside things for them in my head, like, oh, this might be a good starting project. Um, the other thing, too, is I will 
embed them with currents. Like when we have that crossover, just, all right, so you two are going to work on this now and sort of bring them up to speed. And it'll also sort of uh, get them used to our office culture and that sort of thing, what our expectations are. So yeah, those, yeah. Yeah. Uh, were you the only person giving students tasks or were tasks like, were tasks coming, were they going to other people on your team to ask like, hey, what do I do now? Or were they all going just to you? Um, so they were mostly coming to me. I'd okay. say 90% of the time they were coming to me. Um, I think, so putting everything in a central location, I think was helpful. And I think it could work with multiple team members if you sort of, I think then, so for example, in Jira, you could say who, like who reported this issue or even just put like, Hey, ask, you know, ask Peter about this. If you have questions, that sort of a thing. And then they might, um, so that might be a way I, I might deal with multiple students. Um, but in my case, I think 90% of the time they were coming to me with stuff. So that also puts all the overhead on you. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> yep. I'm curious, you mentioned that sometimes it's hard to get overlap to do sort of like the stand up meetings. Mm -hmm. meetings. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, you, if you used any tools or found any uh, processes from maybe like remote, uh, remote team kinds of things that would make, make that easier? Um, so far we haven't had to necessarily, I think, so like we're pretty used to working like, like remotely at NYU in general. And we, we actually have in the past let our students work remotely. Like uh, one of them, you know, he'll go home for the holidays and that sort of thing or, uh, over a break or something. He'll say, Hey, like, do you have anything for me? And we've let him do that. And so, so we have had students call in before, just sort of do conference calls, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I'm not certain if that answers the question. Yes, it looks like you were. Yeah, OK. So the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> I was curious what tools and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, Hangouts, because we're all Google. So or I guess, sorry, it's, what is, it's Google Meet yeah. now? Okay, it's Meet. So Google Meet. Um, and yeah, so we've used that. And I guess it's helpful because everybody's on Google, so we don't have to like teach someone how to set up WebEx or get someone started with Zoom. Or I think NYU might have another one kicking around. But yeah. So. yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.